What does it take to become a doctor? These are the real life stories of McMaster University's med students. On this episode of Med Students, Dave goes on a mission to Zambia, Laverne has a new role in the classroom, and Sam can change a child's life in orthopedic surgery. What I want you to do is to introduce yourself. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, My no, name no, is you. Sam Casper. I'm an orthopedic resident, and I'm not going to save the world, but we're going to fix a few hips. <laughs> we always say. Sam may not be saving the world today, but by fixing hips, he'll be improving the world for a 12-year-old girl with cerebral palsy. Uh, my favorite two things are hips and spines. Anyway, let's go. Sam's third favorite thing, competitive rowing, has been set aside for now. That's my second one at one at Ontario's. The Ontario uh, Rowing Association Championship won one in 96 and one in 98. A resident's schedule doesn't leave much time for sports. Sam's off to the OR to prep the hip surgery. A high functioning 12 uh, year old with cerebral palsy, like she walks on her own and uh, stuff like that. She has that real scissoring gait though, like uh, scissoring. But the main thing is the rotation of the femur is the thing we're going to try to correct. So we're going to uh, break the bone and put some plates and screws and twist it uh, to, to rotate it so that the foot's pointing more straight. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Hip reconstructions are fun. You can do a lot with hips. Last year, Laverne Arthur was teaching high school English classes. Now, he's a first-year med student. You know, we're going to be just about right on the nose. Today's topic is measuring the heart's activity using an EKG. QRS complex is mostly below. It's been a long time since he's had to contend with physics. We call that isoelectric. So the augmented voltage ones, the vector is pointing to the the arm or the foot, and it's positive. <laughs> Does that make more sense? Yeah. To call up my son, who's a physics grad student, to to explain this yeah, to me. Well, if it's isoelectric, then it means you're right on the vector. So, so which vector would you be on? Depends which one's isoelectric. I was in high school many moons ago, and that's the last time I really talked about a vector. Laverne may have some catching up to do, but who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? I've had a lot of variation in reaction to what I'm doing and going into medicine at age 50. At your age, you're doing what, you know, and how old will you be when you're a doctor? And, but if I did stay in teaching, I'd be forced to retire at 65. Uh, as a doctor, you can have a productive working life, productive working life uh, until 75. No reason why not. And although he's just a first-year med student, Laverne is already seeing patients. He set up a short-term elective placement with family physician Dr. David Opper in his private practice. Got the on. The Batmobile. The word orthopedics means, ped is uh, pe like pediatric, it means kids, and ortho means straight, so it means straight kid. I think this operation does really uh, get back to the essence of orthopedics, is uh, straightening out a kid, you know? That's, uh, that's what it's all about. And especially somebody like this who's, uh, who's doing, you know, really well, like walking and stuff, like to help her walk better, that's what it's all about, straight kid, orthopedic. Sam's observed this surgery before, but it's his first time in the driver's seat. Okay. Where do you want to sit? Uh, right here. Yeah, here.
can't fool yourself to think you know everything, but you also can't try to pretend like you know nothing and like lose your confidence. So you gotta, you know, build on what you know. And his supervisor, Dr. Devin Peterson, will guide the way. All right. Good, just start peeling up on the bone. Strip it a little more before you go too much. Sam's first job is to expose the patient's left hip joint. Working with a family physician gives Laverne a chance to broaden his knowledge base and to develop the art of relating to patients. When you know people, you can take better care of them, and you start to develop a kind of a relationship with them. And uh, that's one of the things that excites me about being here. My name is Charlene, and I'm going to go in and introduce myself. Laverne's assignment is to see Charlene, one of Dr. Opper's longtime patients. All right, you say you're here for a gold shot. Yeah, I get the gold shot uh, every two weeks right now. Okay. Does that give you a rich feeling, or what's that? <laughs> hey, no, I, I got inheritance for my kids when I die. Wow. <laughs> they can they can sift through my blood and get the gold. <laughs> okay. But the only inheritance they'll get. <laughs> Now, gold shot is not something I'm familiar with. Why is Dr. Uh, it's for the uh, osteo-rheumatoid arthritis. I think more so for the rheumatoid arthritis. What effect does it do? Does it reduce pain, help you sleep? Oh, uh, well, it keeps the swelling down and, and the swelling the, down. a lot of the pain. So, no other problems today? No. I just going to leave that there, and I'll let Dr. Offer know that okay. you're ready to go. All right, thank okay. you. So we're on the bone now, meaning we're just trying to... Sam and Dr. Peterson have exposed their patient's hip bone. I've never done one where we break the hip on purpose to rotate it. You got to be careful though, because there's a this artery in there. So we're going to have to, you know, be a little bit careful about, uh, you know, you, you, you got to have a little bit of skill to not like plunge your hand too deep when you cut it. Sam gets his instruments in place. He'll have to work carefully. A slip up could cause severe bleeding. Med students choose elective work that appeals to their special interests. Dave Fernandez has arranged to spend a month in Zambia as a medical missionary. And I'm going right down here. So if you look at the Zambia, there's Lusaka, the capital city, and I'm just right up here in the northwestern part there. I'm going to be doing medical work as well as uh, missionary work together. Ooh, I'm bringing peanut butter because I can't live without peanut butter and they don't have peanut butter in rural Zambia. And then this is a my malaria prophylaxis medication. So I'm taking doxycycline once a day. The HIV will be very, the incidence is quite high in Zambia where I'm going in Central Africa. Um, and of course that risk is always there right, just as it is here as well, just a little more increased over there. I don't think I'd be totally prepared at all. I think there's gonna be lots of surprises. Good surprises, bad surprises, both, lots to learn. Is Dave's mom worried for him? No, I'm actually quite excited, but I think it will be a life-changing experience. And yeah, he'll have a lot of diarrhea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Back in the OR, Sam chisels a guide mark into the hip bone before breaking it. I think the thing that sells most people in orthopedics in the first place is um, fixing broken bones. And uh, once in a while, a little bit of gentle breaking, just for, for purposes of uh, realignment. This is where things can go wrong and arteries can start bleeding out of control. Sam saws through the bone to break it. <laughs> Dr. Opper makes his assessment of Charlene and of Laverne. How did Laverne do there? Yes. Okay, Laverne, what did you what did you find out about Charlene? She needs a gold shot, which right. she says is giving her good results for her rheumatism. What's the problem with rheumatoid arthritis? That's a it's a 
deteriorating situation. It's an autoimmune disease. There aren't a, a lot of good drugs that you can use. You start okay. off with the anti-inflammatories, but then you may right. have to go up to things like gold or methotrexate, which is in fact a, a chemotherapeutic agent. Yes. These are dangerous drugs. Okay. Now, to add insult to injury here, okay, um, you get somebody who's also, say, diabetic. Yes. Me. Okay, yes. And, yes. and then yes. We've, yes. we've now got a problem with a, a knee that's got arthritis, uh, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, uh, decreased sensation, decreased circulation in that leg. So you've got a patient who's a complex, yes. multi-problem yeah, yeah, yeah. patient. Okay, now, yeah. you know, normally speaking, you can see a patient in five or ten minutes and, and deal with it. Yeah. Do you think that's easy to do in Charlene's case? Not for a minute. Okay, this is a busy, busy clinic. I see maybe 40 people in a day. Yes. You don't have the luxury, or neither do I for that matter, of taking half an hour to get that proper history. That's one of my questions is how do you go through all of this stuff and still even pretend to keep to a schedule and see enough people. Well, I have the luxury, of course, of knowing Charlene. When you, when you know forever. people, that does help. I can see that. All right, well, you take care. Yes, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Thanks, thanks for seeing me again. Yeah, okay, you're welcome. Okay, bye. bye. Dave says goodbye to his mom and is off to the missionary hospital in Zambia. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Dave. I'm now in Africa. I'm in Rukingi, the hospital where I'm working. I haven't given you a tour of where I am yet. Um, I'll do that later today. But I just woke up and I've been having this problem with cockroaches. Okay, so here we go. We're coming into the kitchen. And let's just see what we have on the floor. Here we have a lot. Look at this. Look. Sam continues to break through the hip bone. Good, nice, perfect. Let's see, we're there. It takes muscle to move the hip into its new position. The difference in the two legs, and the one we didn't do still rolls in, and this one knows. Right way up, kneecap to the ceiling and foot slightly outward. So far, so good. Sam's made it through the left side without any trouble. Now he just has to do the exact same thing on the other hip. Four hours after surgery began, Sam and Dr. Peterson have repositioned both of their patient's hips. That was really good. Shooting. Sam, any problems with that? Looks good? That looks great. Okay, all right, and now let's go on the other side. Great. Although it will take a year before results are fully known, it looks as if Sam's first attempt at this surgery has been a success, and his patient will be able to walk more easily. See, Sam did a great job, and uh, you know, it's a tough case, things can go really bad, but again, he's been around a lot, done a lot of cases, so it makes it a lot easier for me. Perfect, yeah, that's fine. Okay, it's very good, close. Beautiful. All that's left is for Sam to close. Laverne's next patient is six-month-old Jordan, who is having trouble with her right eye. Now, what's, what's, um, what has the Dr. Opper said about the eye in the past? The tear duct is blocked. Blocked tear duct. Isn't that interesting? Not something that I had encountered. Okay, but then I'm brand new at this, so mm -hmm. that makes sense. My question is long-term damage. With it being a film yes. across her eye constantly, wouldn't that distort her vision to some degree? Let me look again here. Hey, Tyke. Hey, Tyke. How are you? Hey. 
it appears quite superficial to me, and I, I think it would need to sort of be more deeply involved to create a problem, but again, that's why we have Dr. Opper here. Okay. So hopefully today I can give you a good view of what's going on and introduce you to some of the patients and stuff. So first we'll go to the peds ward where I'm kind of working right now, and we'll see some of these munchkins. Okay, bye. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Medicine here is completely different than back home, I'll tell you that. The diseases we treat are so different. First day, I couldn't believe it. I think I must have seen 20 cases of malaria. Yeah. Everyone has malaria here, not just any malaria. They have flaming malaria. Uh, these are the beds we use to wheel around people from building to building. They're not exactly the best, but hey, they work. Here we have the B ward, which is basically the TB ward. And finally, here's the theater, which is their word for operating room. So here we are at the lab. And here we have two guys, very busy, working, looking at the slides to see if they have any malaria. So did you find any malaria on there? Some malaria? Yes. Today, Dave has traveled to a rural health clinic with the Mukingi Mobile Eye Service. We're now here in, um, what's this town called? This is Kankoro 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 Uh huh, okay. And this is just outside of Mukingi, about 70 kilometers out? 60 kilometers out of Mukingi. And I'm here with Mr. Fumpa, and we're doing an eye clinic. Their biggest concern is cataracts. Dave will assist with the evaluation of patients and help those who need more serious treatment to travel back to the hospital. So we've collected all these patients today. Most of them are having cataract surgery. And this little girl over here is congenital cataracts. Never been treated for it. She's now 12 years old, can't see anything. They go single file into the hospital because they can't really see. Okay, which eye is it that you've noticed that's being the problem here? Just the Laverne right eye. consults Dr. Opera on whether a blocked tear duct could have a long term effect on Jordan's vision. She was saying that she felt there was a little film over the eye there and that that might be uh, hazardous over the long term. Not I hazardous. I suggesting that what I see, I think, seems fairly superficial, but... Yes, except that. There are studies to suggest that if, if kids' vision is altered, it may alter the way they perceive their world and their relationship with other people. So maybe what we could do is try some garamycin drops mm -hmm. and see how we do on that. Uh, okay. She actually is... Dr. Opper is very warm, he's very open. I've seen already that there's nothing that the patient can tell him that will surprise him. So he tells people the way it is, and they just expect it. It really is an example of a lot of the values I was hoping to see when I first put in my name for a practice. Residency is all about experience and Sam is grateful to have another new surgery under his belt. Oh, good, Chief. Thanks for letting me do them. Thanks for letting me do them. It was very good. They both went excellent. This is the best part. Drop all the heavy lead without getting on sterile. That's why the ones go over the shoulder. Ah. My ultimate goal is to uh, eventually get to a point where, you know, I have all my training you know, I'm managing as a, a career as an orthopedic surgeon, maybe in the community, maybe at a university, I don't know yet, but, but I see myself getting a couple of, uh, like, a couple of, uh, you know, extracurricular things back, like, uh, I think I'm probably going to get back involved in rowing, you know, in the next five years, and uh, things like that, and uh, other than that, I see myself, uh, you know, fix some bones. <laughs> It's Sunday morning in Zambia. Dave's having a bit of a rotten day. I just came back from church, and it looks like the house I'm in has been broken into, so I'll just give you a little sample of what these little people did. Somehow they opened this window, they bent back the metal of this stuff, which is quite hard, I don't know how they did that. 
slash through the screen. They basically took um, 80 US dollars. They took all of my kwacha, which is the Zambian money, which is equal to about 100,000 kwacha, which is about, uh, t mm, which is about $25, so it's good I didn't have too much with me. Um, and the US dollars. And then they left this video camera, which is something I totally don't understand. They left the video camera, but then they took the battery charger. So that's a little bit of annoyance. I don't know why they did that. Other than that, they took my alarm clock and basically just money. It's kind of an invasion of privacy. Anyway, the police are supposed to come by tomorrow. Anyway, a nice little adventure here in Zambia. I thought it was such a nice day. And then look at this. But one bad day is not enough to dampen Dave's enthusiasm. I definitely do not regret coming here. I think this has been a life-changing experience. I feel very fortunate to be able to have uh, come here for four weeks and see a totally different part of the world, not only geographically, but also in how people live. But I also think that this is not the place where I would want to work. You really have to have a calling type of thing to come over here. Um, so anyway, that's about it for now, I think. Okay, ciao, bye. On the next episode of Med Students, Mona Lee learns to operate on children. Allison may get some bad news about her residency. And Dar deals with a potential heart attack in the ER. And how many days have you had it? Well, I just started this morning, but can I call it very severe? Like a stabbing? Yes.